Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to get more leads for your business using AI. We're gonna go into ChatGPT, we're gonna get ideas for web apps we can build, and we're gonna build those web apps live with Claude Artifacts, and you're gonna go from an idea to a web app that you could share with your prospects or your customers and get more sales. Let's get into today's show. Hey everyone, on today's show, I'm gonna show you something that every business should be doing today with AI. And that is using AI code generation tools to make free web applications that you can use as lead magnets for your business. One of the biggest opportunities you have is to spend a few hours, or if you wanna make it really good, maybe a few days to build a lightweight web application that will make and create a ton of value for your customers that you can give away for free, maybe in exchange for email addresses, phone numbers, some way to build that website visitor or social media follower into uh, a relationship where they could become a customer for you. And so I'm going to walk you through all this today. And I thought the best way to do this was to pick like the most kind of basic and universal of small businesses to be an example, but understand that you can follow this process for literally any business, any startup that you have. So the first thing I did is I went to chat GPT and I went to chat GPT because I wanted to get some ideas because it's not just like, hey, go build this thing. I want to build something good. And so here's the initial prompt. I said, I have a friend that has a landscape design business and is looking to improve his online marketing. He wants to offer a free web app to attract customers and collect email addresses for marketing purposes. He's based in Columbus, Ohio, and is looking to serve customers and businesses within a 50 mile radius can you give me some ideas for the app to build? I did this with the O3 app within ChatGPT. And you know what? It came back and it gave me seven ideas, all of which that I thought were pretty good. An AI, this is my favorite one, AI yard vision photo mock-up where it takes a picture of your yard and uses AI to generate new renderings of it. That was going to involve me getting API keys for OpenAI and doing a bunch of stuff. So I didn't do it for the purpose of the show. But if I were actually probably doing this for real and I had a landscape business, this is probably the thing I would go. And it would probably take maybe a week or two of some vibe code to get there, but would be a really compelling way to do it. There's a lawn health diagnostic quiz, project budget estimator seasonal planting calendar, who doesn't want to know when to plant stuff, storm damage risk map, water use ROI calculator. That, I would have never, ever thought of that. Honestly, I thought that was pretty good. And then curb appeal scorecard. So if you have like an HOA or small businesses or you're selling your house, like do I have a good curb appeal? Like is, is my, the drive-by when you pull up, is it going to be looking good? Because uh, I have, you know, some type of commercial incentive to care that it's looking good. So I actually decided I was going to try to do two of these on the show. I did one ahead of time, then we're going to try to do one live. The one I tried to do ahead of time was the project budget estimator. Because one of the things, if you're like, look out your backyard and you're like, oh, my backyard doesn't look that good. I'd like to do something about it. But like, how much would it cost? And I'm really ready to do that. What's that look like? That's like a big like hurdle of friction in the process. And so I said, so it talks, it even gives like a distribution playbook. It, it's very good. Right, like you would go back and forth and refine it and get, get it better. But for the sake of this, we want to take ideas and building an app. And so I basically asked it, "Hey, I love number three, which is that budget uh, app. Could you build me a prompt and a spec for a basic version to build an AI coding platform so that I get an early version live to test?" The business name is Leaves of Grass. I made it up. Shout out Walt Whitman. So what I did here was basically do something very, I think, important in this prompt, which is like, I want a very basic spec because I want to test if this idea is actually good. One of the advantages you have with these AI coding tools today is that previously you would have been like, oh, cool, I have this idea for this budgeting calculator. I'm going to hire some type of web development company to go and build this for me. And they're probably going to charge you 10, 20, 30, 50K to do something like this. It's going to take, you know, a couple months probably for them to do. And it may or may not be the right thing. It may or may not work. So it's a lot of time and upfront money to know if it is the right thing to do for your business. 
So one of the advantages of these AI coding platforms is that you can get a proof of concept. You can get something that you can put on your website or share with a small number of people to say, hey, do people actually use this? Does it work? Does it give people value? And if so, then I can either take time to build a deeper version or maybe hire somebody to build a, like a really thorough, deep, high scale version, right? And so this is like, can I get to prospect market fit? And do, does a prospective customer really like and want to interact with this? And so I asked it for that and it gave me a one shot build the app prompt, okay? And then it also gave me a full technical spec for me and any people that were going to work with the prompt that it generated. And it says, hey, here's the recommended build sequence. Scaffold with the one shot prompt, configure Superbase or SendGrid. This is like, hey, if you want to build the entire app, do all of the back end, have the email automation work, do everything, it's saying it's going to take you about four hours, which is not a short amount of time, but not a crazy amount of time for something that would have taken months before. Um, and it tells you exactly what to do. And you can then basically ask questions and how to's to each of these numbers. And uh, depending on your level of proficiency, a couple hours to maybe a day or two, and you would have this done. How do you do it even faster? Well, I want to show you how you would go and do it even faster. One of my favorite AI products out right now, and you're going to see lots of different shows from Kieran and I coming around this, is all on Claude's artifact feature. And artifacts are a way that you build and deploy web apps in Claude. You want to go to Claude and you want to click on artifacts. So you have new chat, chats, projects, and now there's this new artifacts. And you can go look at artifacts people have built. You can look at the things you built, or you can go to create a new artifact. And what's really cool is that you can build apps and website, documents, games, productivity tools, quizzes. Remember that quiz idea that ChatGPT gave us? We could build it right there. And you can publish a public version of your apps without having to do a lot of the backend work, especially if it's just a prototype. Like if, if you have advanced features and you need an API and that kind of stuff, you're not gonna probably put it on an artifact. But if you're doing like basic web apps, artifacts are a really quick and fast way to do that. And so this is what I have built for our calculator. Okay, so I went into Claude and I pasted this one shot prompt from ChatGPT that we, we got the idea, we asked it for a prompt for the idea we like, and you see the full prompt in here and it's basically giving it the lightweight web app to build. Claude goes through and builds, you know, the full document, the code, everything that you need here. And it kind of got a little stuck, so I had to do it again. Um, it, ba it And basically tells you, hey, here are the features that I implemented. Here's what, what I did. And then it tells me how to get started, like how to copy the files, set up an environment, run all of this. And I said, hey, and I just did this in regular cloud. I didn't go to the artifacts feature like I showed you at first. It's like, hey, can you just create an artifact for this so that I can see how it works? And so it did that. And if you click on this, then this pops up over here, which is my real live web app. And it made a logo. If I had given it a logo, it would have used that. Um, but this is my made up business. And it says, hey, instant pricing, professional PDF estimates, local Columbus expertise, start start your estimate. So, hey, you know, maybe I got I got a, my square feet of my lot's actually pretty big. I'm going to say I got 10,000, uh, 10,000 square feet. Um, you could upload an image of your property. That's optional. I won't do that now. Uh, premium patio installation. I want, I'd, I'd like a 500 square foot patio. I don't want a pergola, but hey, I love gardens. So I want a good good amount of planning beds. Lighting fixtures, yeah, I don't wanna walk around in the dark. I'm gonna need eight fixtures in there. Sod, you should see my grass, it's horrible. So I'm gonna need most of the yard sodded, you know, when I don't, where I don't have the other stuff. Do I want a custom water feature? Sure, who doesn't like water? And then I'm gonna say, get my estimate. And right here, it says, yeah, my name is, yeah, honor. I can't even capitalize my name. 
put in a fake email, get my estimate, and then it is it is sent, it is supposed to send me the actual PDF estimate. Demo mode email not actually sent. Um, or I can say download a PDF as well. But here it is. Here's the actual estimate it gave me. Like, so, you know, if I went in and gave it all these variables and saying, hey, it's going to take, it's going to cost $34,000 in two weeks. Obviously, this is an estimate. It wouldn't be binding. You'd go in and you'd put all, the, all of your actual costs in and estimates in. But I did this in 20 minutes. You could see how a little bit more time and you could make something really good. And what's crazy is I can hit publish right here and I can publish and copy the link. And now I can just copy this link and put it wherever we want. And like, I can put it in the comments of this show and you can go and see that it's like live and available. Yes, I can go and do all the hosting and build the web app and everything. But let's say I just have like 10, 20 customers or I have a page on my website that I wanna put it on for a week to see if people actually use it and what works and what doesn't work with it. I can use this cloud project link before I go and invest in the, the next big heavy version of this, which is pretty wild and pretty awesome. So like you can go from an idea for your business for a lead magnet to putting having a live working app in 30 to 60 minutes. Now you gotta get the email collection right, collect it in your CRM, use HubSpot, that whole thing. But that is what needs to happen. Hey everyone, look, if you're enjoying this episode, you're going to love this. You can go through it yourself right now and see how surprisingly smooth it is. You're gonna to wanna to get this right now. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description below. Now let's get back to today's show. Okay, so then let's do another one just for fun to see if, if, it, if, it's, if it works and everything again. So I asked it for one of my other favorite ideas which was the curb appeal scorecard. So I go over to ChatGPT and I wanna see if I could do this again, potentially. And I really like the idea of this curb appeal scorecard. And so I had it generate the same one-shot prompt. And if we were doing this for real, and this was really our business, we would probably iterate on this prompt and the details around how you wanted the app to work and everything. You would go back and forth on that more probably take 15 to 20 minutes to really get this prompt deep and right. Um, but once you got the prompt right, you're going to hit copy and you're going to go over here to our friendly artifacts feature. We're going to go over here to this, our friendly artifacts feature that I had showed you before. We'll click apps and websites. And then I'm going to take this and it's going to, uh, it's asking me what I want to do. It's, it's thinking for a second. I'm going to paste in our lovely one-shot prompt here, and I'm gonna hit build it. Perfect, let's see what you can do. Leaves of Grass, Curb Appeal Scorecard, MVP. Okay, it's building out, it's telling me what it's gonna build, the user experience flow, the strategy, everything there. And I'm gonna say, build this in an artifact for me. So now you're seeing that we went here, put in that prompt, and now it's actually writing all the code. You can see it here, generating the code for our app. And so an artifact really is just a web app where the code is written, contained, and hosted within Claude. And I suspect Claude is gonna keep making artifacts more and more powerful. And for a lot of one-off use cases, small business use cases, individual use cases, you're just gonna end up using artifacts versus like going and hosting a full dedicated web app uh, because I think Anthropic is gonna make that uh, product better and better. They'll probably charge you for uh, the hosting and some of the, the costs of goods sold associated with that, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So it is generating, it's writing. Like I said, you're even though you're writing a quote unquote an MVP app, it still has to write a good amount of code and is working through here. 
I feel like I'm kind of on like an old school cooking show, you know, where they put the thing in the oven and then they turn around and they take the done thing from the other oven. It's like, whoosh, except this time it really did. Cause here is our scorecard. What's interesting is it used the same logo and branding as the other app. Like, and I didn't say to do any of that, which is, which is pretty cool. And here it is. So you upload pictures of your property or choose sample images, and then you continue to your assessment. And it's like, we have a, we have a working app and we would upload photos. Yep. It's pulling it, it, upload photos. We would put photos in and let's see, let's see if it, how, how it actually works here. All right. So I found a photo from Google of a house that had good curb appeal. I'm just going to see if it'll let me upload one and continue the assessment. All right. They uploaded a picture. Now, how well maintained is this landscaping? Oh, it's excellent. Conditions of walkways are four. Maybe there's a couple little cracks. Uh, we are, how much seasonal color is present? Oh, there's some flowers there. It's looking good. Outdoor lighting, it's five. Attractive is the signage and wayfinding. It's four. It's looking good. Uh, what's interesting is it created all these categories and did all of this for us. These are like good things. Obviously, depending on your business, you would go and customize those. And then again, you put your, and you could decide if you wanted this type of conversion mechanic or if you wanted to do something else, but this is a, uh, a good example of that. All right. And then, hey, it says, hey, you have a grade A. Here's photo analysis, green coverage, 47%, visual symmetry, 78%, areas for attention, debris visible, uneven edges. Uh, let me see if I can, there's no debris visible in this photo, but we, I, I digress. Um, it's, it, it's, it's an early prototype of, of what we're doing here. But again, you can see that you would potentially hook up a, hook up the right API to analyze the photo and do all of the, the work that you'd want to do here. So these are two apps that if you were a landscaper, you could go and build and test. And you know what? Likely increase the amount of people who are coming to your website that you're actually getting email addresses, reaching out to, and trying to work with for landscaping services. And you would do this for literally any small business or any individual project that you were working on. I think cloud artifacts are a critically important part of the up and coming AI coding stack. And as a marketer or as a founder, one of the things you're looking for is to validate an idea really quickly with your audience. And that's what today's show was all about. Can I, with the help of AI, get some ideas, bring those ideas to life, and then either test them with an audience or test them with myself to know, hey, this is what I need to iterate on. These are, this is the actual like technology that needs to exist for this to actually be a good experience. And we go and build it. We take it live to everyone. Uh, I would love to hear what you've been building with AI coding tools. If you're using Claude Artifacts, publish links to stuff you're building below. I'd love to go and check that out. Thank you so much for checking out today's show. I'd love to hear how you're inspired to go and build some stuff for your business. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you real soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.